and welcome to my channel. I hope you're all feeling strong. Now I'm out for my daily exercise and I'm glad you've joined me. Oh yes, that's right, I would be all by myself. I'm not far from where I live obviously, for obvious reasons we're still not allowed to go too far from where we live. Uh, but thankfully we are still allowed out so we can still get out and about just as long as we keep the social distance and don't go too far from home. So I'm very close to home and behind me there that squat little tower is Nab End Tower here at Longwood Edge. So we're going to go up the tower now and uh, have a little look around. It was actually built this tower, um, it was completed in 1869 and uh, apparently it was built by unemployed workers and it had no planning permission or anything, they just uh, knocked it up <laughs> and it certainly looks like it as well. <laughs> Okay, so we're at the top of Naben Tower. Now, four years after this tower was built on Thump Sunday, all the locals came and started singing uh, songs around the base of this tower. And it still continues today, actually. Uh, the choir still comes and sings uh, songs here. In fact, they built, I'll just show you down here. They've actually built, you might be able to see them steps there. Uh, that's where the choir sits now and they still do it to this day I do believe. Naben Tower overlooks the Cone Valley down there and uh, Mills Bridge is the village that you can see down there. You can see the viaduct dominating Mills Bridge but it didn't always look like that and I'm always fascinated by the old stuff, how things used to be and how much of the old you can still see today. So we're going to take a wander down into Mills Bridge and see just how much of the old we can see today. So. Uh, Let's go down there. So it was just a short walk down here to Mills Bridge from Naben Tower at Longwood Edge. And uh, Mills Bridge is about two miles from the centre of Huddersfield, west of the centre. So we're here in Mills Bridge, of course, and on the way down, I passed lots of the old mills. And uh, we saw Tanyard Road there, and Tanyard Road is just behind me now, and that is a sign of the past. And you see the name Tanyard Road all over the place because uh, the UK was uh, full of tanyards at one point, and that's exactly what they were for tanning hides. So if you see a tanyard, road near you that'll be where the tan yard exactly was and over there is where Mills Bridge tan yard was. Now all evidence of the tan yard has gone apart from of course the name of the road but behind me is the exact spot. It was definitely in operation as a tan yard in the 1820s and uh, it was quite a large concern with about uh, 30 stone lined soaking pits all around here. Now the first process of tanning the hides was to soaked them in a lime solution and that got all the fur off and decayed the fat and then after that they were kind of soaked in a brew of acorns and bark and that whole process took about 18 months so there had been quite a smell coming from here from behind me when this was a tan yard. Now Mills Bridge gets its name from the water powered mill and the bridge that stood right alongside it way back in the 13th century. Mills Bridge benefited massively when the canal came along and you can see behind me the canal heading out of Mills Bridge and it rises up in quick succession with these locks uh, heading towards Stanage Tunnel and towards Manchester of course. In the 1950s when the canal was closed down the stretch of canal between Paddock which is about a mile back that way to Marsden at the entrance of Stanage Tunnel. That was all closed down and the, uh, the locks were all either cascaded, filled in or, uh, or closed off. And since it was closed, the waterway just started to deteriorate. And I can remember back in the 80s, this uh, whole waterway, the canal, being a pretty dirty area and the canal was full of shopping trolleys 
and all sorts of things. In fact, if you fell in, you'd be lucky to get out without being snagged on something and drowning. There was quite a few cases of that. So yeah, I remember when I was a child, this uh, being a pretty messy area, the canal, it was pretty sad. So how come the canal and the locks are in such good condition today? Well, we owe that entirely to the Huddersfield Canal Society. And back in the early 70s, they started campaigning hard to restore the entire length of the Huddersfield Canal to its former glory. And it was a massive effort for them. They did such a good job dredging it all, pulling out all the shopping trolleys and all the, all the debris that uh, over the years us humans have thrown into the canals. And they've done an excellent job. And now the waterway is open right through to the Stanish Tunnel. And they've even gone right through the Stanish Tunnel. You can go all the way through and head on out towards Manchester. So a fantastic job that they've done there with the canal. It's absolutely brilliant. So most of the buildings in Mills Bridge were built around the 19th century, so they're pretty modern and you'd need a good imagination to imagine what it looked like when there was just the mill there, the corn mill, which gave the village its name. It was just lush green meadows with a stream running through it and uh, that's what it looked like. So you'd need a really good imagination to imagine that, but that's what it was like in medieval times back in the uh, 13th century. So I've done the little hike back up to Nab End Tower here at Longwood Edge where we began and you can see Mills Bridge behind me. I hope you've enjoyed the little trip down to Mills Bridge and uh, just to find out if we could see anything of the past still there and I think we found a few things. I hope you've enjoyed this vlog. I upload a vlog every week so if you have enjoyed this one give me a thumbs up and of course consider subscribing and if I don't see you through the week I will see you in the next one. Bye.